we're back with the NREF 53DK and uh, today we will do some basic writing on the microSD card using uh, the library from Atmel. So right here I got a empty microSD card. So now I'm inserting it into our board right here. Okay. And now let's reset and we got uh, the microSD card initialized and we got it written. So let's quickly check it on the computer what we got. So we got the file named sctxt and we got written here a test string from our board. So let's take a look at the project. Okay, so we are in the project uh, in the main function. So first of all, we have to set up the SPI. So let's take a look at it short. And we got uh, the SPI for working. Uh, I still have an issue using uh, two SPIs at once, so for this example I'm using only one instance of the SPI, so the fourth one. Uh, so if you got uh, two uh, instances enabled in the kconfig, which you can take a look here, uh, then going back here, the fourth one is the last one, so this would be 0 and this would be 1 in the index and uh, I use the pins of the SPI from the uh, LCD which are these and I'm not using the chip select because I will have to use it manually because I'm using uh, two SPI devices so the screen and also the micro SD card so two different CS pins and uh, the thing here to set up is the frequency to 4 megahertz because the card uh, doesn't really uh, work well with the 8 and 16 options uh, but it works fine with the 4 megahertz so after this the regular initial initialization and uh, uh, connecting of the the interrupt from the Zephyr and the peripheral. So going back to the main function, uh, we are setting up the GPIO pins, so the backlight, the uh, CS pin for the LCD, the data command pin for the LCD. Uh, right here I got the input for the uh, screen touch control, so uh, it is an input that uh, tells you whether the screen is being touched. Next on we got uh, the output for the microSD card uh, CS pin. And right here I'm starting the display, so let's take a look at it. So the backlight uh, and uh, printing uh, some stuff on the screen. Mm, I explained this in the previous video on the NRF about the Bluetooth. Okay, so now let's take a look what is here. So, uh, also a string displayed, and uh, right here I initialize the micro SD uh, stack. So, let's take a look at this function. So right here I use the functions uh, that are in the file right here. And it uses the uh, linking between drivers for the micro SD card, which is defined at the top of the file. So right here you got the linking uh, of the functions to the driver. So the driver right here is the SPI SD MMC. So if we 
uh, call I init right here. Uh, so this function will lead to a different function. So and this file. So let's quickly search for it. So it will lead to this function. Uh, we don't set up the SPI right here. So this is just empty. And uh, how do we select the devices? So right here we got the select device. So we only uh, make the uh, CS pin of the card uh, being driven low. So we select it and if we deselect it, we simply drive the pin high. So in those two places, so those uh, functions are uh, exported from the main file. As you can see right here. And for the uh, writing and reading from the micro SD card, I got right here uh, functions to write and read uh, single uh, bytes of data. Uh, a simple approach Maybe a bit slow, but uh, pretty much uh, feasible, transparent. Okay, so let's go back right here. So after the initialization stuff, uh, we can start uh, writing to the micro SD card. So I got this function here to write a file right here. So uh, it is a function that returns a uh, integer 8 bits so we can see if uh, we got the micro SD card working or not so um, I made the variables for the uh, file system and the file uh, a global variables so we don't use the dynamically allocated variables so heap and stack so we don't need to worry about crashing it. And uh, what we do here is to write to a file named sc.txt. And uh, we want to uh, always create it or always open. So if the file exists, it will be just opened. And if it doesn't exist, it will be created. So that's the difference. And uh, after we open it, uh, we will write a string like this one to it. And we always write it at the start of the file. So uh, if we would like to write uh, by appending it to the file, uh, we can simply use uh, this function right here the flseq mm, to move the pointer of the file to the end of it. Uh, there's always another option. You can change the fa open always to open append. So let's take a look if we got here. Oh, we don't have it here. So uh, never mind, you don't have this option. Anyways, you got only this option. So uh, now we will uh, do a change. So we will write this string uh, being appended. So at the end of the file, it will be written. Okay, so after we write it using the F puts, so the string is being put on the file right here, uh, we can close it. And if we really want to write to the file very fast, we can use the F sync. Um, but I don't really recommend it if you don't have to use it. So after everything is done, we can unmount the file system and return from the function with uh, this variable here. So uh, if we detect the micro SD card, we write uh, that it is being written. And if we don't, we write that it is not detected. Another string and in the background we uh, 
check if we got the screen pressed. If we do, we just uh, print it out. So very easy. So let's quickly build it. And uh, now let's flash it. Okay, so I got the card inserted right here. So let's reset the board a few times. So we will append to the file a few times. Okay, so now let's remove the micro SD card. And let's check it in the computer. Okay, so now let's insert the micro SD card. And let's open up the Explorer and see what we got. So we got the string appended to the end of the file each time. So the example works fine. And right here we got the new line here. So very quick, easy to do, and hope you find it useful in your projects. So see you in the next one.